This world shall know pain. Today we're going to be talking about Vegeta. His uh, hair transformation. So, Yukio Ebisawa and Masayuki Uchiyama have both etched out quite a name for themselves amongst the Dragon Ball fandom due to their often unrefined take on characters, elevating some images into meme status. And what held their episodes together was more so the skill of the key animators under them, such as with Studio Last House, you had Tetsu Asaiki, now Toshishida, and Taichio Ahara. With Studio Live, it was Marie Tomonaga for Dragon Ball until her departure, then later in Z, Toshiyuki Kano and Tomio Ida. But I thought why not compare the two and look at the main three aspects of their work, supervision, animation and artwork. And let me know who you prefer in the comments and why. But like usual though, the featured artist for this video is PlattyPie123. He can draw some really nice gestures and poses and has quite a different style. So show him some support, I'm sure he would very much appreciate it. Link to his account will be in the description and now back to the video. So let's begin with their artwork and honestly I personally didn't mind Ebisawa and Uchiyama's work throughout the original series. Uchiyama's rounded look to characters work fine and he could draw quite a cute kid Goku. Ebisawa's famed triangle shaped heads, something you can even see in his older work from Dr. Slump weren't as noticeable although nearing the end of the original series that certainly changed but it was still tolerable compared to what it would later become. But regardless, when it came to Z, both seemed to have trouble keeping up with the ever-evolving art style. Now, if you were to ask me who created the best artwork, not in terms of consistency, just in general terms, out of the two, I would say Ebisawa. And if you ask me who created some of the poorest out of the two, I would say Ebisawa again. Now, while Uchiyama certainly had his fair share of oddly drawn faces, I would still say Ebisawa seemed to miraculously push that bar just a bit further. Not by a massive amount, but by enough. At the same time though, despite having some really low moments in the Namek arc especially, his work surprisingly saw improvement in the Cell and Boo arc, putting out some solid work on occasion, whereas Uchiyama's rounded style felt more out of place than ever as the series went on. And another positive I'll add to Ebisawa that applies to both his work in general, whether Z or the original series, is that he could pack some great expressions into characters, which certainly worked well with comedic moments. At the same time, he was equally able to turn a non-comedic scene into a comedy, which I think is a superpower not even Toriyama possesses. However, one highlight in particular that caught my eye is this tight close-up of Buhan. It's really well drawn with all this hatching around the face, some quite good shading that gives a sense of form and having smaller veins wrapping around the larger veins, which is an approach I've never really seen veins drawn in but really synchronizes well in selling his frustration. On the other hand, Uchiyama seemed to struggle giving intensity to characters' facial expressions, feeling quite plain at times regardless of what arc in Z. Furthermore, Uchiyama seems to never fully grasp the fundamental of form in the various planes of the face, resulting in characters looking quite flat and bland. There also seemed to be very little, if any, variance in the thickness of his line work, which contributed to this also. Ebisawa's character art in comparison did have more variety in his line work and better shapes in regards to shading, and as a result was able to convey more depth in his character art, which is one element that saw improvement in later arcs. Likewise, the faces did also with the triangular look starting to reduce and the proportions of facial features improving. Although despite the faces improving, something that certainly didn't was anatomy. Uchiyama's stylization of anatomy may have never been that appealing, but Ebisawa's was less so and looked more cartoonier with pointy feet, boxy shoulders, and oddly shapen arms. Heads could also look like melons on side-on poses, looking rather humorous at times. So I am confident in saying the way Uchiyama drew anatomy was certainly better than Ebisawa. All in all, for me personally, I would have to say though that the way Ebisawa drew facial features were typically more appealing than Uchiyama with exception to female characters. As to who was better overall, I would say I somewhat would lean to Uchiyama within the Saiyan and Namek arc, although in the Android Cell and Boo arc, I would have to say I rather Ebisawa. Now to their animation. So the truth is, while all their work certainly wasn't bad, it was mediocre for the most part. I've never heard someone get hyped up at a Uchiyama scene and go, yeah man, that was amazing, you see the way his foot floated into his head? But in all seriousness, when doing an overview of Uchiyama's work and in particular action sequences, he could deliver impact to his blows, 
Android 17 vs Piccolo or Gohan vs Cell are fine examples. Unfortunately though, this wasn't a consistent trait in his work because at times it could feel rather weightless as well. However, Ebisaba was much the same. There are certainly examples of some really nice animated blows exchanged, like his scene from Movie 1 with Piccolo and Goku teaming up against Garlic Jr. or Master Roshi fending off against multiple Biomen in Movie 2, but there are plenty more times where it was rather flat in execution. Their choreography was also equally quite plain, with usually nothing out of the ordinary. Uchiyama's animation, though, due to often mediocre timing and spacing, made characters' movements at times feel sluggish and rigid. Ebisara, on the other hand, was a bit more consistent in this area, delivering decent movement to characters as well as somewhat more interesting timing. In conclusion, both certainly had some good animation, but I would have to say Ebisawa was somewhat better in this area. Of course, as mentioned before, Ebisawa certainly had his fair share of underwhelming scenes, but overall his work was typically better animated. Not by a wide margin, but still better. And now finally to their work as supervisors. So animation wise, Studio Last House were definitely better but when it came to the quality of the artwork in an episode, I somewhat lean more to Ebisawa's episodes as he wasn't as harsh on corrections as Uchiyama, which was a staple of Uchiyama's work even in the original series, so the style of other animators under Ebisawa typically would shine more like Kano's and Ida's, which as shown before was nothing but a positive for the look of an episode. Uchiyama though did seem to lighten up somewhat in Z, especially with Shida in the Saiyan and Namek arc. You can see more of an unfiltered look of his work, which certainly was a positive again. But by and large, as the series went on, his rigorous approach didn't really lessen and if anything, increased somewhat in the Boo arc. Regardless though, this created a more consistent look for an episode than Ebisawa's. Still though, in regards to this point, I think it's up to personal taste. I mean, would you rather an episode that is consistently bland for the most part, or an episode that is somewhat inconsistent visually, with rather poor art in it, but some quite appealing artwork at the same time? For me, I would go with the latter, which is why I lean more to Ebisawa once again. I'd rather not sacrifice perfectly fine looking artwork just for the sake of an episode looking consistent. So in conclusion though, who was the better out of the two? I would say Ebisawa. I appreciate him for simply standing back more as a supervisor, that doesn't mean he never made unnecessary corrections on those under him because he certainly did, but as mentioned, it wasn't to the same extent. Although artwork wise, I'm sort of split because Uchiyama's work never dropped as low as Ebisawa's did and usually featured better proportions. However, Ebisawa did actually improve later in the series, whereas Uchiyama, despite working on hundreds of episodes, barely did at all. In terms of animation, Ebisawa, despite producing one of the lowest points in Z, typically was better overall. But I must mention that Uchiyama was a massive help in now Toshishida's career, which I touched on in the last video. But with that, I'll end this video. Thank you for watching. It was certainly an interesting one to make. I've honestly never been a fan of either of them, so going into this video, I didn't actually know who I would prefer at the end. Although I do feel that prior to making it, I always considered Uchiyama to be slightly better just because I knew he never made anything close to that iconic shot from episode 104. But when looking at their body of work and going side by side, Ebisawa kind of surprised me and so did the time it took to write this video. But anyway, with that, thank you for watching and sticking around to the end and I'll see you later.